let us ask God's mercy as we start this service today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, we come to you on this day to worship you. Speak to us, O Lord. Heavenly Father, we fall at your feet and we declare we are nothing without you and we submit ourselves totally to you. Jesus, our Master, we fall down at your feet, we hug your feet and we declare we are totally yours. We surrender ourselves totally to you. Holy Spirit, we fall at your feet, we kiss your feet and we declare we are nothing without you, we are nothing before you as we submit ourselves totally unto your feet. Please take complete control of our life. We give you all glory, we give you all honor, we give you all worship. Let's all praise and worship the Lord wherever you are. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we worship you. We give you glory and honor. Speak to us, O Lord. Speak to your people, O Lord. Touch them, Lord. Amas you on them, Lord. Speak to them, O Lord. Wherever they are, whatever may be the situations, Lord. Directly speak into their ears. Directly speak into their heart. Lord, where else we go, who else will help us? Abba, Father, we are yours. Jesus, we are yours. Holy Spirit, we are yours. All the angels and saints pray for your people. Quays of seraphim, quays of cherubim, quays of thrones, quays of powers, quays of dominions, quays of virtues, quays of principalities, quays of archangels, quays of angels pray for us. We belong to you and we worship you. Let your holy name be honored. Let your holy name be worshipped as we give you all glory and honor, as we give you all worship and adoration. Receive all glory and honor, O Lord. Receive all the worship. God is calling Alexander by name. God is blessing Alexander. Somebody having severe back pain, God is healing you. Somebody having a kind of a stomach uh, prolapse, it's like after you have given birth, you have this stomach related problem, God is healing a person. God is calling Violet by name and God is consoling her. God is blessing Sister Grace, God is calling her name and God is blessing. God is also blessing Sister Mary and God is touching Dominic Savio and God is blessing him. God is blessing Mary and God is blessing Amelia. Lord, be with us. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, there be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and your Father. death. Amen. My sisters and brothers, please kindly uh, pray for me, so that I may speak only what the Holy Spirit wanted me to speak. Somebody having severe shoulder pain, God is healing you as you are praying. Also, uh, somebody having a kind of toothache. You have tried several treatments, but still this pain is not going from you. It's a severe type of toothache, God is healing you. Jerome, God is calling you by name, God is blessing you. Sandra, God is blessing you. Somebody, your marriage is at the brink of breaking. God is intervening right now. Brian, God is blessing you. Abba Father Jesus, Holy Spirit, speak to us. Most Holy Spirit, come and take complete control. Lord Jesus, I pray for everyone who attending this service of today. Speak to them directly and give them answers for all their difficulties. Jesus, where else they go, who else will help them? Bless them, Lord, in your name. Lord, I pray for them and I bless them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sisters and brothers, first of all, I thank you so much for joining on this eve of the Corpus Christi, where we have the one of the most solemn feasts of the Catholic Church, that is the Corpus Christi, that is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us read this word of God from the Gospel of John. This is chapter 6, verses from 51. John chapter 6 verse 51 Lord Jesus said I am the living bread that came down from heaven 
whoever eats of this bread will live forever and the bread that i will give for the life of the world is my flesh let this word of god sink inside our body mind and soul where jesus opened his mouth and he told using his tongue i am you know there are so many i am statements i am statements i am the alpha i am the omega i am the good shepherd i am the true wine i am who i am i am the light of the world i am the word made flesh i am the way i am the truth i am the life see there are so many i am statements and one of those i am statements that is jesus is god that he is the living bread that means he is the eucharist he is the uh, life giving food and who came down from heaven whoever eats of this bread will live forever and the bread that i will give for the life of the world is my flesh it is my flesh that means he himself becomes our flesh part of our body i have uh, while one day I was talking with reverend father george panakel in our center in uk he was sharing me one thing that he used to share to people who are struggling to forget the past incidents for example one a lady came to father george and told her that she has no confidence to get married because she had past relationships and whenever she had she thinks about marriage that past relationship is always taunting her heart saying that now because that was a broken relationship she, she was living with a boyfriend and later on the the relationship broke up the boy moved on with his life but she could not because she had those memories of the past since he committed so she was telling she cannot get married to another man unless she gets rid of all these past uh, sinful uh, pleasures that she experienced because sometimes she used to feel what has happened in the past so and she could not forget and she could not forgive herself she could not forgive her ex boyfriend and she was thinking that she is already been the boyfriend has destroyed her life and now she cannot be a, have a faithful uh, marital life so thinking about the past uh, sins she could not uh, forgive herself or think about marriage with somebody else she was thinking it's like cheating on another man uh, because i cannot give myself totally because i'm already been been spoiled so she had this type of thinking and she's telling i cannot forget that memory that i had involved in the past sins so father george was telling he has heard such a uh, type of doubts of so many people and one day while he was praying the lord revealed to him as an answer to this problem to recommend people to the holy eucharist recommend people to receive the body and the blood of jesus it is through my body it is while, while receiving my body they will be able to become a new person father was telling that see when you receive the body and the blood of jesus your body is cleansed it's no longer your body there is only one god who told us i will change your body it's only one god who changed his body there is no other god so your memory that is there in your old body when you receive the holy eucharist you have already been becoming a new person and you are not living in your old self in your old flesh but it's in a new flesh this flesh is given by christ by his own body and blood that is why sisters and brothers one single holy eucharist has the the authority to transform you completely transform your painful memory transform your sinful memory transform your sinful pleasures transform everything that you are committed in your flesh in your body once you receive the body and the blood of jesus you are no longer a, a, an old person you are a new person you read in the book of it is uh, wisdom chapter 16 verses from 20 this is book of wisdom chapter 16 verses from 20 let me read this word of god instead of these things you gave your people food of angels and without their toil you supplied them from heaven and with bread ready to eat let us look at the screen and let us read this word of god instead of these things you nourished your people with the food of angels and having prepared bread from heaven you served them without labor that which holds within itself every delight and the sweetness of every flavor and we continue until verse 24 it goes on the word of god goes on verse 21 for your nature showed your sweetness 
which you hold within your sons. And serving the will of each one, it was converted to what each one preferred. Then we read verse 22. But snow and ice held back from the held back the strength of fire and did not melt, so that they might know that fire burning in the hail and flashing in the rain destroyed the fruits of the enemies. Then 23. Was 23. We read. Whereas if the fire, yet it was also the case so that the chest might be nourished, that fire had even been deprived of its own power. Then we read verse 24. Verse 24. For the creature serving you, the creator, grows red hot in the midst of the conflict against the unjust, and yet it subsides the benefit of those who trust in you. This is actually about for your sustenance manifested your sweetness towards your children. This is verse 21, sisters and brothers. This is about the manna that the Lord gave to the people of Israel. The speciality of this manna. That it is verse 21. Let us read again verse 21. For your sustenance maintained your sweetness. For your nature showed your sweetness. Which you hold within your sons. And serving the will of each one. It was converted to what each one preferred. That means God has become that manna that the Lord gave, that the Father gave, Yahweh gave to the people of Israel. If it was just, it is a symbolic gesture of Jesus becoming the manna in the New Testament. He himself became the manna which satisfies all your problems, all your hunger. Isaiah chapter 55, 1 to 3, we read this one. See, the Lord is offering himself and he's telling us, come to me, come to me and take it. Hold everyone who thirsts, come to the waters and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. We read, verse 2 up to 3 we read, God is inviting us, come and drink of me, come and eat of me. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. And this food is he himself. Then, verse 3, we read. Verse 3. Verse 3. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. And this everlasting covenant is the Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, the body and blood of Christ, the Holy Eucharist. This is my bread. Take and eat of it. This is my blood. Take and drink of it. And it is the greatest covenant God has ever, ever committed with his people. He became body and blood of Christ. Sisters and brothers, I have heard huge testimonies about the power of the Eucharist. There is a, 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 a visionary called Maria. She is in Kerala. I have heard when I was a new priest, I heard her testimony. She was a Hindu, a non-Christian. God converted and became a Catholic. See, and she did not know anything about the Eucharist. She did not know anything about the Catholic faith because she was a pagan. She was not a Christian. Then after she got converted, she started to attend the Holy Mass. And initially she was not, you know, before she became a Catholic, she got converted, attending Holy Masses, but she could not receive Holy Communion. So she can see people receiving the body of Jesus, though she did not know. But one day while she was praying, closing her eyes, she could see on the altar, when the priest is celebrating the Mass, when the consecration prayer is over, the bread that was there on the altar becoming heart, becoming a heart. And that heart is pumping as, as if it is alive, with full of blood. That a live, a living heart is being cut off from a person's body and kept it alive on the bottom, on the altar. And she could see the small horse, a small heart. And she could see the people are going and they are eating the heart. And she fell unconscious, screaming. She could not believe that the people are eating real flesh. Because she was, she could, did not even become a, a Catholic, she was not even baptized, but God revealed to her the, the, the magnitude and the, the significance of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. That it is real. And if we ever attend one single Holy Mass with that great faith, great devotion, one single Holy Mass is enough to convert all of us forever. And one Holy Eucharist has unlimited power because it has everything. 
Then Jesus said, this is now Gospel of John, this is chapter 6, verse from 52. John from 52. The people have disputed. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? You know, it's a question many ask, especially the non-Catholics. And we continue to read. Then Jesus said, you know, Jesus is telling, this is what he's telling. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you. See, Jesus is telling, very truly I tell you. It's not a lie. It is truth, very true, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. So it is, the life is in the Eucharist. Are you sick? That means you don't have life. Eucharist can give you that life. That's why I have seen so many people, while they receive Eucharist, they receive healing, because there is life in the Eucharist, because it is Jesus himself. He is giving you life. I do remember this uh, testimony of Sister Brieg McKenna, one of the most famous uh, preachers, and she has a gift of healing. She said how she got converted. She had throat cancer. So she, in her faith, while she was receiving the Holy Communion, she told Jesus, Jesus, if you are real, when your body touches my throat, let me be healed of throat cancer. And Sister Brieg McKenna got healed of throat cancer as she received Holy Eucharist in holiness. I know another testimony of a sister called Sister Mary Ann. She is not a. She was not a. a, a she was not a Catholic. Actually, she was being uh, married to a Hindu, a non-Christian, and she had. Though she was very devoted, very prayerful when she was small, but since she went to the university, she met a man. She got married. She had left her faith completely because her husband was a strong uh, Hindu. But while. She, and she is a professor, but while uh, she was teaching, she had some doubt and she detected she had fourth stage terrible cancer on her uterus. So now she tried all treatments because she had money, but the doctors had already given up on her. So when the doctors had given up on Mary and one of her friends just visited and told her, this is Gospel of Mark chapter 10 verse 27, Mark 10 27, her friend categorically told her, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. For doctors, it is impossible to heal you. For doctors, it is impossible to help you because your cancer is spread all over your uterus and it's fourth stage and it is impossible for them, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Believe it, her friends told her. Then she said, but now at this age, at this time, as, as just days are away from my death, what do I do? Then her friend told her, why can't you give Jesus a chance in your life? Why can't you give Jesus a chance? Then Mary Ann said, but I'm not a Christian. I have left the faith. I have rejected Jesus. Then how can I give chance to Jesus? Will he accept? Then this friend told her, definitely, because Jesus said, John 6, 37, John 6, 37, whoever my father gives me, they come to me, and I will not draw away anyone who comes to me. Everything that the father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. This is God's word. Anyone who comes to me, you may have lost your faith, you may have become a non-Christian, you may have become a Hindu, you may have abandoned your God, but if you are willing to come to him, he will never drive you away. Drive you away. He always gives another chance. He's a God who gives you a second chance. And this lady also explained to her, look at the, look at the parable of the, uh, of the fig tree. What did uh, the master told? It is actually Luke chapter 13. It is was from uh, 8. This is Luke 13 from 8. When the, the master had decided to cut it off, he said, he replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure in it. Let it alone for one more year. And this is what God is telling See, a, a, a fig tree is wasting the land, wasting the manure of the land, wasting the space of the earth. Because if it is not producing the fruit, you know the fig tree, it can block even other trees to produce fruit. And it is, if it has no fruit, it is useless. But they have just pleaded, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig it and put manure in it. Then was nine. Then what did the masters do? If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, it can be cut down. See, God is giving another chance. One more chance. And he is always giving this chance to his people. And this lady explained to Mary, don't lose heart. Don't lose faith. He will give you one more chance. 
So then she asked her friend, now what do I do? Then she said, I will take you to a retreat center. I will take you to a place where there is a retreat. And it was in our divine, in our Thabo Divine Retreat Center in Mumbai. What I say is a true testimony. And then this lady with her friend, because she has this fourth stage cancer, and it was very serious. If she has any dust or anything, it cannot affect. But the friend told her, don't worry, come. And Miriam said she came and she attended the service. The moment she ended inside the retreat center, she got a new grace. She got a new faith. She got a new hope that something is taking place in her life. And now, first time after so many, uh, so long, so many months, first time she could eat the bread given by the retreat center and see that her cancer was in the uterus. And she found something during the adoration, something was falling away from her stomach, sisters and brothers. She remembered when she was attending the Holy Mass, when she was small, a little girl, before she went to the university, she was very active in the church, attended the Holy Mass. She was the first one reaching the church because her father was also a strong believer. And she came, she got all the memories of her past devotion to the Holy Eucharist, that how zealous she was. Even there were days when there were no one to help in the Holy Mass, she used to even serve at the altar. Now every memory came to Mary and she started to cry extra, exactly like the prodigal son who lost that warmth and the love of his loving father. And now Marian started to cry and ask the Lord, forgive me, my Lord, and give me another chance. And Marian received healing. Her testimony was even being published in an official channel when the doctors tested her. They were shocked to see that Marian had a new uterus. She was almost 50 years when she got cancer and she got healed. But when the doctors said, you know, that the doctors were also not Christians. They were shocked to see because the old report and the new report, now she has no cancer. Not only that, she got a new uterus. And later on, Marianne, she became a preacher, she became an evangelizer. She stopped being a professor in a university and now she became a professor of the word of God. She started to learn the word of God because her case was a, a case that was being written up by the doctors, given up by everyone. Because then there is no one to help. See, even her friend, told that because her husband was a strong Hindu and did not want her to go to any hospital, uh, it means go, go to any, any, any place of worship, should not be associated with Christian, her friend told the husband, anyway, your wife has a few days to live. What it matters if she goes? Sisters and brothers, once her, her wife is, is healed, her husband also got converted. And one day, Marian was praying Lord, why did you give me a new uterus? And the Lord gave her Psalm chapter 103, verses from 2 to 4. The scripture that the Lord revealed to her is just to thank God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with the steadfast love and mercy. Then verse 5. Verse 5, we also read verse 5. What does God do? And why we have to thank the Lord for, for whatever things? Who satisfy you with the good things as long as you live and so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. See, God does something new, not like any other person. And what does he do? He even renews your youth like the eagles. So though she was 50 years, after she got healed, she got the uterus of, of that of a 13-year-old. Means a, a very young uh, girl's uterus as if it is so fresh, so new. That in such a way that the youth of a person is renewed when a person is coming to the Lord. This was exactly happened in the life of Mary Ann. And now she is still alive. She has no trace of cancer. Everything was being healed by the power of the Eucharist. And imagine that time she could not even receive the Eucharist. She attended the Eucharist and through the Eucharistic prayers that was going on, she has such an experience. Then she repented, she returned, and she started to receive the Holy Communion, and she was telling she was getting complete healing. She's still alive. She's still around. Sisters and brothers, this is the power of the Eucharist. Your body that is as dead as it is will get new life when you receive the Eucharist. That's why, again, Gospel of uh, John, this is chapter 6, verse 54, we read. Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 54. John 6, 54. John 6, 54. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. So if, if we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, we are being assured of eternal life. 
and we have been assured of a resurrection that God is going to, it is his assurance because he has already come inside you. And the body and the blood of Jesus, sisters and brothers, it is so real. I can say being a priest, what makes me to survive? What gives me the grace is the Eucharist. If there is no Eucharist, there is no. priests cannot survive. Why priests survive? Because they have the body and the blood of Jesus to give them new life, to give them new spirit, to give them new inspiration, to give them new health, new body. Because even we, our flesh, when it is committed, when it commits sin, but when you receive the body and the blood of Jesus, that sinful body get converted and become a new body. He changes, God changes the body of yours. And you no longer live in that old flesh with the sin, old body with that committed sin. You are in a new body. That's why after receiving the Holy Eucharist, you are not that same person. You are a person living in Christ. That's why St. Paul said, it's not me who live, it is Christ who lives in me. So every Christian who receives the Eucharist can say, it's not me who, who lives, it is Christ. I also have another testimony. This testimony comes from Kenya. One day one lady uh, was brought for counseling. She was on the wheelchair, her friend brought her. She was a single mother, she had two daughters. So she was just very weak, she was just 34 kilograms of weight. Instead she was supposed to be minimum 70 to 80 kilograms, but now because of because she was HIV positive, no food was remaining in her body. And even she had this problem of loose motion and all kinds of difficulties. And that's the way she was struggling. And that's why she was being brought uh, for prayers. So when she came to the counseling room, I just asked her a question that, uh, do you believe in Jesus? She said, of course I believe in Jesus. So I asked her, do you believe that Jesus can heal you? You know, she's HIV positive. So she told me that, Father, I did not come for healing. I came because I know the doctors have told me that it's, it's my time that I may not live for no. Father, I know I'm very weak. I cannot do anything of my own. I cannot walk on my own feet and I am very weak. So my coming here is for my daughters. Father, once I die, there is no one to look after my daughter. I cannot entrust my daughters to anyone to look after her because I don't have a husband. And I have two daughters who are in their teenage. Uh, so as a priest, do you have any place that my daughters can be safe and they can be looked after? Can you recommend me to your place? I know you're a missionary. So I wanted you to pray over my daughters and find a place for them. Once I die, can you look after my daughters? Can you recommend me to your place? Can you suggest to me who has to look after my daughters? So she was just saying it in tears because she has a true mother. She is so much concerned. She's not concerned about herself. Even at the brink of death, at the brink of her suffering, her pain, she was thinking all about her daughters. So she was always praying for the welfare of her daughters. That's the time I really understood the love of a mother. Even when she's sick, she's not thinking about her sickness, her healing. She has even forgotten to, to ask for a prayer of healing. And she's asking me, can you help my daughters to get support, daughters to get a life? Who can? She's asking me, do, whom do you think, Father, who can look after my daughters? Who do you think as a missionary? Sisters and brothers, because she was just telling me in tears, I also feel such deep pain in my heart to asking God to have mercy. Then I am hearing a voice like this and I told her, do you know, do you want to know who has to look after your daughters? What does Jesus is telling? She said, of course, Father, tell me. They told her, the Lord wants the mother to look after the daughters. The mother to look after the daughters. Then she said, but Father, you mean that I have to look after my daughters? I said, of course, when the Lord says something, it is true. He wants you to look after. Then she said, but Father, I'm weak. I'm sick. I cannot do anything on my own. Then how do I look after my daughters? Then I told her, do you believe that Jesus can heal you? Do you believe that Jesus can heal you and give you a new life? Then she said, but Father, it's not time, it's too late. Father, it is too late. And I'm already at the brink of death. The doctors have already told me that now I can prepare for death. So Father, how do I believe? I know for God nothing is impossible. Then I asked her, how long since you made your last confession? How long since you made your last confession? She said, Father, I don't go for confession. Then I asked her, why don't you go for confession? She told me, are you Catholic? She said, Father, of course I'm a Catholic. Then I told her, why don't you go for confession? She said, Father, I, you know my case is different. I'm afraid to make confession. Father, I don't think anyone can forgive my sin. Father, I don't think even Jesus can forgive me. 
I asked her, why? How do you say that? Jesus forgives every sinner. See, King David, he committed adultery. He committed murder. He committed idolatry. He broke all the Ten Commandments. Still, God forgave him. Have you committed more sins like David? He forgave the prodigal son. He committed all those sins and God forgave. Then she said, but Father, you listen to me. My case is different. I don't go for confession because I don't have the courage to confess. Father, my problem is I committed sins knowingly. Father, my boyfriend cheated on me and he infected me with the AIDS. So I was so revengeful and he did not take up the responsibility. And when I got pregnant, he abandoned me. So when I checked, I was already infected. When I told him that, no, I will not look after you. Father, because I was so bitter, I knowingly went and slept with more than nine different men and I infected all of them with AIDS because I want to destroy the lives of men who destroyed my life. So I wanted to destroy them. So I don't know how to confess. I don't know whether Jesus can forgive me because I was so bitter and I destroyed the lives of many different people because I committed sins knowingly. I told her, even God forgives that sin. We taught her a prayer to, to pray. This is from Psalm chapter 41, verse 4. Psalm 41, verse 4. We told her to repeat this word of God every day for 50 times. She told me she cannot even remember the things of the past. What has been gone wrong except this particular sin? So we told her, just repeat this prayer. As for me, I said, oh Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. It is your prayer. You think that you are sick because you have sinned. You think that you are not forgiven because of the revengeful feelings. But this is a prayer King David prayed. You can use your rosary and count it and just pray repeatedly. As for me, I said, oh Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. Oh Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. And I told her, God forgives you. God forgives even you became a sick by committing sin. He forgives you when you confess. Again, we explained to her Sirach chapter 38, 9 and 10. Sirach chapter 38, verses 9 and 10, where the word of God says, My child, when you are sick, delay not. Confess your sins, and the Most High will heal you. When you are sick, delay not. Your God is all able to heal you. It is Sirach chapter 38, verses 8 and 9. For the, for the peace of God is upon the uh, surface of the earth. Son, in your infirmity, verse 9, Son, in your infirmity, in your sickness, you should not neglect yourself. But pray to the Lord, and he will cure you. Then verse 10, turn away from sin, and direct your hands, and cleanse your heart from every defense. Turn away from sin. In some translations, it is confess your sin, and direct your hearts, and cleanse your heart from every offense, so that the Most High may heal you. Cleanse your heart from every sin. Then she, she asked, Father, how do you think that God forgives me the sin even I committed it knowingly? I explained to her, of course. Peter denied Jesus. I asked her, knowingly or unknowingly? She said, I think knowingly. I told her, not you think. It is, it is knowingly because Jesus gave Peter three warnings, three times that you are going to deny him. But Peter gave up and he, he denied Jesus, not just once, thrice. And I asked her, did Jesus forgive her, forgive him? She said, of course Jesus forgave. Then I asked her, did Jesus give Peter any penance, any punishment? Then she said, I, I don't know. Uh, I think so. I told her, the punishment that Jesus gave to Peter is written in the Gospel of John chapter 21 from 15. After Jesus is being risen from the dead, Jesus appeared to Simon Peter and Jesus asked him, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Do you love me more than this? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. See, now the same question Jesus asked thrice. And the Bible scholars say, when for the third time Jesus asked the same question, Peter became very sad because his master never used to ask him the same question over and over again. Then so many thoughts came to his mind because I have purposely denied him three times. Because I have gone back for fishing. Because I have been, been denied the existence of Jesus. Because I have disassociated with him. Because I have gone back to my old ways. Because I, am, I, have, been, uh, I have rejected my master. So he's asking me these same questions again and again. Then Peter, for the third time, Peter and it is chapter 21, verse 17. Chapter 21 from 17, you read. The third time when Jesus asked, Peter became sad. It is written. He became sad. 
he said to him at the third time simon son of jonah do you love me peter felt hurt you know it's written peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time do you love me see such a small question such a simple question is hurting peter that's why the bible scholars say so many things went through peter and he said to him lord you know everything you know that i love you sisters and brothers now peter made himself so humble what he is telling lord you know everything what does it mean you know me you know how pathetic i am you know how miserable i am you know how repeatedly i fall into the same sin how many times i have fallen into the same same sin i have given you so many empty promises i have taken so many vows that i will never deny i will never fall back into that sexual sin into that wrong relationship into that adultery into that pornography into that alcohol into that drugs into that wrong friendship but lord i have failed you miserably you know everything how weak how sinful how afflicted i am how imperfect i am how incapable i am how weak and wicked i am but lord look deep inside my heart i love you look inside my heart i love you sisters and brothers that was more than enough for jesus to forgive peter so the greatest penance i used to tell people the greatest penance jesus can give to a repentant sinner is asking you a small question do you love me and if you say i love you it's all finished you all your sins are forgiven permanently sisters and brothers uh, since this uh, conviction i have received after the day of after confession in our retreat center the song that we sing along with all the people especially in kenya we used to sing this beautiful uh, hymn called i love you i love you i love you i love you jesus sorry i don't know how to sing but this is such a profound song and we also sing in kisovili in different languages nakopenda 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 yes and i know that when people were kneeling down lifting their hands and singing this hymn i have seen heaven coming down because this is the this is the most beautiful response of a repenting sinner when you say lord i have I, i love you in spite of who i am in spite of all the sins in spite of all my failures lord look inside my heart i love you sisters and brothers i know so well if you are attending this retreat because you love jesus christ i know that if you are attending this retreat maybe in your place it is too late maybe in your place you have another different works that you have to do but still you have to listen to the word of god it's not because you are a saint but because you are a sinner because you have failed because you have fallen into the same repeated weakness and now you come to the lord the lord just wants you to say one small word i love you jesus you know it is there satan is ashamed satan is defeated he is humbled because you declare at the end of the day you love god so we explain to this this uh, lady who was so much into into guilty feeling so much into into uh, fear that no one can forgive we told her jesus forgives just say that i love you make a good confession that and say you know when peter said lord you know everything is a confession you know all my sins you know everything that happened in my life from before i was born and even until after my death so we explained to her to make a good confession sisters and brothers i have to complete this testimony where she resolved to confess she, she, she told me for i don't remember the sins to confess except few sins she told her don't worry you repeat this word of god psalm 41 for as for me i said oh lord be gracious to me heal me for i have sinned against you 50 times and the holy spirit will remind you the sins to confess psalm 41 for and she started to confess those sins sisters and brothers as she started to confess these sins god gave her the help to confess and she made a confession in our center itself and we told her because she was coming from far don't come back maybe because you are sick it's not a must but go to your nearby parish go to your nearby parish and make confession every day and receive the holy eucharist every day for one month every day for one month sisters and brothers and we told her before you have to make confession before you have to receive holy communion make sure even if you have committed a very small sin don't receive communion in that sin receive communion only after receiving the body and the blood of jesus christ means only after making confession receive the body and the blood of jesus christ sisters and brothers she obeyed me i told her go to your nearby parish don't come to this place because eucharist is the same everywhere but what makes eucharist so effective so anointed 
when you attend the Holy Eucharist in holiness. Right now, as you hear me, somebody having a severe hip joint pain on the right side. You are using a walking stick called is healing. You can see an electricity like power entering in the right side of your hip joint. God is healing you. Somebody was having a severe asthmatic problem. God is healing you. Sisters and brothers, this lady listened to us and started to attend the Holy Mass. And after one month, sisters and brothers, she uh, attended, she felt that she's putting on weight. And again, another one month, another, uh, another month. Three months later, she came back, not on wheelchair. She was perfectly healed of HIV positive. She came with a certificate from the doctors who had previously told that she was HIV positive. Now she came with a certificate that she is HIV negative. And the doctors were shocked and the doctors also came into our center to see the miracle that the Lord had performed. Sisters and brothers, when she came back to me after three months, she was already 78 kilograms of weight. She was only 34 kilograms. The Lord Jesus did this miracle through Holy Eucharist. Her body was sinful. She committed the sin and she herself admitted it is sin that made her sick. But when she resolved to confess and when she received the Holy Eucharist in holiness, repeatedly, the body and the blood of Jesus gave her physical healing, gave her a new body, new life, and, and she started to look after her children. Sisters and brothers, that Jesus is the same today. You have to know Jesus who healed the leper. Jesus who, who has healed those who have been possessed. Jesus who had forgiven the sinners. Jesus who, who forgave and brought back to life that paralytic man. Jesus who brought back to life the one who was at the, at, at the pool of Bethsaida. He is the same, same today. This is what you have to believe. So that Jesus is the same in the Holy Eucharist. That's why when you consume the body and the blood of Jesus in holiness, miracles take place. If Marian can receive a new uterus, if this lady can receive physical healing from HIV positive, sisters and brothers, what more miracles can take place? You will be able to overcome bad habits, physical sicknesses, emotional hurt feelings by the power of the body and blood of Jesus. And as the greatest gift Jesus has left behind as he was being being ascended into heaven that means that is his real presence when uh, when angel gabriel revealed to mary that your son will be called emmanuel and that that great prophecy of being an emmanuel god with us is being completely fulfilled through the holy eucharist he's with us he's with us and to be before the blessed sacrament and to worship the Eucharistic Lord and to receive the body and the blood of Jesus is the greatest privilege, greatest honor we can have on the earthly life. One small Eucharist can transform the whole world. One Eucharist can solve your problems. I myself, I am a witness. My mother who was paralyzed got healed by the power of the Holy Eucharist. I myself is a witness that somebody who was in the prison, he was being released when we offered Holy Masters for him. I am a witness that our land that was not being getting sold was sold when my mother and father offered three Holy Masters for the land for the blocks to be removed. I am a witness that by the power of the Eucharist, a mentally sick person was being healed. I am a witness that through the Eucharist, all my desires, all my requests was being answered. I have passed exam as I offered Holy Masters. I got transferred by the power of the Holy Eucharist. I got certain uh, benefits, means certain blessings through the Eucharist. I got certain answers through the power of the Eucharist. Even God is granted me the grace to overcome certain repeated sins and repeated bad habits as I offered all my weaknesses into the, into the altar of the Lord, into the body and blood of Jesus. Saint Padre Pio used to pray and that is the prayer that I also try to pray in every Eucharist. For Saint Padre Pio, when he was celebrating Mass, he used to tell Jesus directly, you know, Eucharist is the direct, direct prayer of God. You know, we can have direct prayer. Padre Pio used to pray to Jesus, my Jesus, I offer more, my body with your body. I offer my soul with your soul. I offer my uh, mind with your mind. I offer my life with your life. As you transform this bread and wine into your body and blood, transform my life. That means you're not that old person as you have already offered yourself into the body and blood of Jesus. Today, sisters and brothers, let us pray for a great intervention of God. Let God increase the faith in you towards the Eucharist, towards the proper adoration, towards the body and blood of Jesus. And let us repent even on behalf of those who refuse or refute the power of the Holy Eucharist. See, one day, one priest was telling a pastor came to argue with him. 
he is a he is a protestant pastor and this pastor was very powerful fiery preacher then in his argument that you know the, the eucharist is just to have a clericalism then this priest got an inspiration to ask him you know sola scriptura you know only scripture only bible is needed and he said and in this scripture what does gospel of john chapter 6 says how do you interpret the gospel of john chapter 6 gospel of chapter john chapter 6 is all about eucharist and many disputed and many stopped following jesus but jesus did not change his statement i am the bread of life and you don't have life unless you eat and drink you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood sisters and brothers let us pray also for all those who do not understand the power of the eucharist this praise and worship the lord for god's mighty intervention in this regard shala bahalla bathira bahalla bahrin dira bahalla rabaria lord we lift up unto you everything everything in detail come lord speak to us all lord wash us wash everyone who are here in your blood shala bahalla bathira bahalla bathira bahalla rabaria sagara arba sagara arba sagara arba sagara arba sagara arba sagara arba halan dira bahalan dira bahalan dira bahalan dira Lord speak to your people Lord speak to your people Lord sala bahalandi 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 sala Anita God is blessing you. Rita God is blessing you. Sally God is blessing you. Calvin God is calling you by name. God is blessing you. Mario God is blessing you and removing all your difficulties in your family. God is blessing you. Gabi. Gabi you are my daughter. God is assuring you. His protection. Somebody who is a smith. Uh, God is blessing you. Uh, somebody who you are a driver. And God is telling you that how many times you are. i saved you from many accidents many possible accidents i was beside you to protect you be grateful and never miss your family prayer shala bahalla bandira bahalla rabaria sindira bahalla rabaria somebody you, you have taken the property belongs to someone it happened some years back but now you have so many problem please retain please retain the property that you have taken that belongs to others so that your children and children's children may have prosperity Shala bahalla bandira god is touching a lawyer who is very committed in helping the poor shindira bahalla bahalla bandira bahalla rabaria shindira bahalla rabaria shala bahalla bandira bahalla rabaria there are some you give lot of you idolize certain priests certain leaders certain politicians certain people who are in in any kind of position or authority god is giving you a warning if you look at people they will hurt you they will break your heart please keep away from human beings keep away from human love just love only jesus christ he alone can stand beside you shala bahalla the a priest who is struggling to obey the superior your major superior god is telling you obey obedience is martyrdom and jesus himself obe obey until death so as you obey you are imitating the cat from jesus and you get the blessing shala bahalla somebody having severe knee pain god is healing you somebody having urinary infection god is healing you somebody having constipation god is healing you somebody having breathing difficulty and your nose is blocked god is healing you god is calling priya by name god is blessing priya ana god is blessing you sakari god is blessing you daniel god is blessing you claire god is blessing you alfonso god is blessing you god is blessing somebody you are preparing for an examination it is another attempt Uh, several attempts have already completed god is giving you the grace to complete this exam chelsea god is blessing you christy god is blessing you tanya god is blessing you justin god is blessing you somebody who met with an accident and seriously admitted in the hospital and you even require blood in this situation if there is not a confusion god is telling i will provide i will provide I will provide. Just on behalf of that person, you can attend the Holy Mass and pray. God is going to intervene. God is also blessing uh, Sister uh, Mary. Sister Mary, God is telling that you are my real servant. You are my real servant because you have so many challenges in the community. God is telling, I am there for you. God is also blessing Januarius. God is blessing Geraldine. God is blessing Matthew. God is blessing Jennifer. Jennifer Jesusa. God is blessing you. 
Marina, God is blessing you, consoling you, comforting you, Marina. Somebody who is who is uh, running an orphanage, but there is now there is no means to make it go forward. God is telling, I'm going to send benefactors to help you. A teacher, a nursery teacher is being blessed. Some parents came and made some comments. You're so broken, but the Lord is telling, hold, hold on to me because you teach my children about you, about God. So God is standing beside you. Heavenly Father Jesus, Holy Spirit, bless everyone who are attending this service. You have all the graces. Somebody who is praying to buy a taxi, buy a vehicle for taxi, God is intervening in this regard. Just surrender this desire to the Lord. Paul, God is calling you by name. God is blessing you. Sebi, God is blessing you. Julia, God is blessing you. Please pray for me. I beg you to pray for me. Ten Hail Marys. As we are going to enter into the counseling, I beg you to pray for me and wait. This is uh, uh, maybe you can pray ten Hail Marys. And if you can also pray one rosary as you wait, as we start the uh, uh, Zoom counseling, counseling through the Zoom. Once, first of all, we will uh, stop the relay through the YouTube, and we'll also come out of this, come out of this Zoom link, and I will again resign. So you can remain in the same place and then you will be allocated rooms. Ruben, our coordinator, he will be allocating rooms to you and then I will be entering into that room. As we have mentioned yesterday, we are preparing for a special, very special retreat called Inner Healing Retreat. That will be at the same time, uh, 9.30 to 12 o'clock in Indian time. That means for, for Kenya, it is from 7 o'clock from 9.30, 7 to 9.30. And the speciality of this retreat, this retreat also being conducted by Sister Hazel D'Souza. She is an international preacher. She has traveled so many countries to preach God's kingdom. Along with Giselle, a powerful anointed singer. And uh, I myself will be there. So this will be conducted to help you. And the speciality of this inner healing retreat, after those who have attending the retreat for three days, they will be counseling for those who attend this retreat. Maybe as a family, as individuals, you will be helped from Monday until uh, Friday, every day for five hours. There will be counseling available for those who attend the Inner Healing Retreat. Not for anybody else, those who have attended the retreat will be given because then we will be able to make a journey with you. So we'll also pray during this counseling for personal deliverance, personal inner healing, praying to remove certain hidden blocks. So that's also available for that uh, after the Inner Healing Retreat. So we have already shared this, the poster of the Inner Healing Retreat at the beginning, but uh, again, uh, uh, Ruben will, will show you the poster so that you can, uh, uh, you can show this uh, poster to others so that uh, you'll be able to, I will also show you, I, I can show you that the poster here. You can look at uh, this poster. This is uh, the Inner Healing Retreat. Uh, from 4th to 6th June, 6 p.m. to 8.30, the time in Rwanda, 9.30 to 12, the time in India, 5 to 7.30, time in UK, 7 to 9.30 p.m. is time in East Africa, that is Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. And the retreat will also be available in our YouTube channel, and the meeting ID is the same because it's on the same channel, we will be giving this one. We also have given the details of the personal counseling that you need, and there will be a special counseling day on Monday that is exclusively set apart for priests, nuns, seminarians, and all the religious candidates. So even for married couples, children and the youth, and those are facing different types of blocks and bondages, even for any other general needs. So please uh, forward this poster to others and inform them the details of this retreat so that during this pandemic time, they may be benefited by this retreat. So. May Almighty God give you all the blessings and protection and anointing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say, Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the day of the battle. Be our same for against wickedness and snares of the day. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray, and do the Prince of Heaven, who has the divine power of God, cast into us, Satan, and all of the evil spirits who wander for the world, seeking the reign of souls. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian, be at you, God's love, come with me here. Over this day, be at my side, night and God, who am the Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.